This is example 8.5. 8.5 reads, the dark line on the graph below shows the average hip flexion extension angle recorded for several trials of a healthy subject, plotted versus percent of gait cycle. If the average stride time for these trials is known to be 1.12 seconds, use the graph to estimate the instantaneous hip angular velocity, magnitude, and direction at 20% GC, 50% GC, and 70% GC. Give your answers in degrees per second. So this problem is asking us for the angular velocity. So let's write down the equation we know for angular velocity. Angular velocity equals distance over time. Now they give us the total gait cycle time to be 1.12 seconds. That means that the entire bottom x-axis of the graph from 0 to 100 percent takes 1.12 seconds. So when we're trying to calculate the angular velocity, we're going to have to take this number and multiply it by whatever percent we're trying to solve for. Now our distance is going to end up being the change in the angle. So for each of these points, we're going to find the change in the angle and divide it by the time at that point to find our angular acceleration. I'm going to pull up the photo of the graph now so we can work on finding the slope of each point. So we are asked to find 20% of the GC, 50% of the GC, and 70% of the GC. So we're going to estimate where those points are on the line about here and 70 around here. So first to find the slope we will draw a tangent of each line. Right away we see that the tangent of 50 is flat which means our angular velocity is zero because this is a graph of distance over time, the slope of the line dictates the angular velocity. So we already know that 50 percent equals zero. Now let's work on this point. We're going to extend this line slightly to make it easier to draw. So we're going to go about five left and five right from 20 to make the division easy. So we will draw our lines like so from 15 and then we will draw from those points over to the left to find the y coordinates of each point. We know that slope is equal to the change in y over the change in x change in x is about 10 and the change in y is about 14 degrees. Notice we do y2 first minus y1 so it's actually negative 14 degrees. So now we opened a new one just so it's easier to see and we're going to do the same thing for 70 percent. Our tangent line looks something like this and we're going to go about 5% left and 5% right of 70, again, just to make the math easier when calculating the slope. So we'll draw it over to the left. So our slope of 70% will be change in y over change in x. And when we look at the change in x, we see that it's about 10 percent, which is what we attempted to make it. And when we look at the change in y, it's about 19 degrees. So now let's return to the main screen to finish up this problem. So we just found for 20 percent, we found that the angular velocity equals negative 14 degrees over 10 percent. We can't just do this math how it's written. We need to change 10 percent to time. So we know that 
we have to find, so we have to find what's 10% of this 1.12 seconds. To do so, we'll simply multiply it by 10. This gives us 0.112 seconds. So we will rewrite this as negative 14 degrees over 0.112 seconds. This gives us negative 125 degrees per second as our angular velocity. We know that this is when the hip is extending due to the slope of the tangent. Now we will look at 50%. We found that the slope was zero, so anything in this equation with zero on top and whatever time you want to do would equal zero. So our angular velocity is zero. Now lastly, for 70%, we found that the change in y was 19 degrees and the change in x was 10% of the time. So we did the same math before and we know that 10% of the time is 0.112 seconds. So we'll plug this into our calculator. We find that our answer is about plus 170 degrees per second and we know that the hip is flexing. This is example 8.5.